Welcome to your Introduction to Statistics Unit 3 Lesson 2. Um, remember we're talking about probability and today we're going to find the probability of compound events. Okay, first let's talk about independent events. Um, the occurrence or non-occurrence of one event does not change the probability that the other event will occur when two events are independent. So for example, tossing a coin and rolling a die. Even tossing a coin twice your first toss doesn't affect how your second toss will end up. If you get heads on the first toss, you're not more likely to get tails on the second toss. Each toss is independent. Um, rolling a die is the same way. If you roll a die twice, you can, if you, uh, when you roll it the first time, you've got a probability of one sixth of landing on, say, five. The next time you roll it, you still have a probability of one-sixth of landing on a five. So certainly, tossing a coin and rolling a die are independent events because um, one does not have an effect at all on the other. Okay, so if events A and B are independent, then the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. Conditional probability. Okay, if events are not independent, the fact that one occurs affects the probability that the other occurs. So the probability of A given B equals the probability that event A occurs, assuming that B has already occurred. Probability of A given B is written capital P again, and then in the parentheses, you're going to have your capital A, and then a little, um, almost like half of an absolute value symbol, one little absolute value bar, B, and it's read A given B. Now, the general multiplication rule for any events is that the probability of A and B both occurring is the probability of A times the probability of B, given that A already occurred. And um, it, you can also know things in the other direction. You can have the probability of B times the probability of A given B. So the multiplication rules, there's, for independent events, it's just probability of A times probability of B. And then for any events, you can either have probability of A times probability of B given A. Oops. Or you can have probability of B times probability of A given B. Okay, so let's look at independent events. When choosing two cards from two separate decks of cards, find the probabilities of getting two fives. Okay, so we want the probability of getting a five from the first deck and five from the second deck. So there are four fives. One, there's a five of clubs, a five of hearts, a five of um, spades, and a five of diamonds. So there's four fives out of the 52 cards in a deck. That's true for the first deck, and that's true for the second deck. So it's 4 out of 52 times 4 out of 52. That reduces down to 1 13th times 1 13th. So that's 1 over 169. Okay, so let's look at for non-independent events. When choosing two cards from a deck without replacement, so now you're going to have two cards. You're going to still choose two cards. That we're going to have a single deck of cards, and we're not replacing. In other words, we're not going to look at a card, make note of it, put it back in, and reshuffle. Okay, so we're going to draw two cards like you normally would. If someone's dealing you two cards, boom, they're dealing you two cards. We want to find the probability of getting two fives. So this time these events are not independent. Okay, look what happens. So the probability of two fives here is the probability on the, of getting a five on the first draw and a five on the second draw. So on the first draw, there's still, there's four fives in our deck of 52 cards, okay? There's the five of hearts, the five of diamonds, the five of spades, and the five of clubs. All right, so we draw one card. So our denominator is automatically going to go down one because we're dealing with just a single deck and we've drawn one card. If that card was a five, which is what we're talking about now, now there's only three fives remaining out of the 51 cards. Okay, so there's three ways to get a five out of the 51 remaining cards. So this is the probability of drawing a five for the second card, given that you've drawn a five for the first card. Okay, so if you look, we've got the probability of drawing a five on the first card 
times the probability of drawing a five for the second card, given that you drew a five on the first card. So that's going to give you 12 out of 2,652, which reduces down to 1 over 221. And versus or. Okay, a lot of times we're interested in either two events both occurring or at least one of them occurring. And means both events occur together. Or means that at least one of the events occurs and is picky or is not. Okay, here's a picture of the event um, A and B. Okay, so here's A, here's B. If they intersect, this intersection is A and B. The event A or B includes the overlap, but it also includes things that are in A but not in B and things that are in B but not in A. But they can both occur, but it's just that at least A occurs and at least B occurs. It's very important that you know this, that A or B means A occurs, B occurs, or if you're really lucky, both occur. Okay, so the general addition rule is for any events A and B, the probability of A or B occurring is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And at first you may be like, wait, why are we subtracting anything? Let's go back and look at our picture. When we're going to add probability of A, that's a whole pink circle, plus the probability of B, that's a whole blue circle. Well, if you look, we've, we have um, added the purple part twice. We added it with the probability of A, we added it with the probability of B, so we have to subtract it off once because it's been overcounted. So that's why it's the probability of A plus probability of B minus what's called the joint probability, the probability of A and B. Okay, so when choosing a card from an ordinary deck, the probability of getting a 5 or a red card is going to be the probability of 5 plus the probability of red minus the probability of 5 and red because we've counted 5 in red with the 5 and we've counted 5 in red with the red so it's been counted twice. Alright, so probability of getting a 5, there's those 4 uh, fives in a deck of 52 cards. Half the cards are red, half the cards are black, so 26 cards are red. Minus, well let's think about which cards are five and red? You've got your five of hearts and your five of diamonds. So there's two cards that are both five and red. Okay, so let's see, that gives us 30 minus two is 28 out of 52, and that reduces down to 7 thirteenths. When choosing a card from an ordinary deck, the probability of getting a five or a six. So for this, we do probability of getting a five plus probability of getting a six minus the probability of getting five and six. Well, there's four fives, so there's four out of 52 ways to get a five. There's four out of 52 ways to get a six, because there's a six of hearts, a six of diamonds, a six of clubs, and a six of spades. Minus, well, how many cards are both a five and a six at the same time? Well, none. Okay, you, they can't be a 5 and a 6 at the same time. You can have a 5 and a red at the same time, but you can't have a 5 and a 6 at the same time. So there's 0. There's no overlap. Okay, so we have 4 plus 4 is 8, minus 0 is still 8 out of 52, and that reduces to 2 thirteenths. Being a 5 and a 6 in um, a deck of cards is called a disjoint or mutually exclusive event. Both of those terms Disjoint or mutually exclusive means they cannot occur at the same time. Okay, so events that are disjoint, in other words, mutually exclusive, cannot happen together. So the probability of A and B is equal to zero. So the addition rule for mutually exclusive events is just you take off the minus the probability of A and B because it equals zero. So it's just the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. So, when rolling an ordinary die, the probability of getting a 4 or a 6, well, you can't get them both at the same time. So, all you have to do is the 1 6 probability of getting a 4 plus the 1 6 probability of getting a 6, and you get 2 out of 6, which is 1 -third. Okay, let's look at a two way table. We can find probabilities based on a two way table. Okay, so what we have here is we have some survey results. And the people in the survey um, 
said what their education level is. So there were 116 college graduates, 71 who were not college graduates, and if you add both of those up, that gives you your grand total of 187. The people in the survey were also asked if they were males or females. So there were 85 males and 102 females. So these outside spaces um, tell us the row totals and the column totals. All right. The inside spaces give us the counts of people that meet both characteristics. So there were 54 males who were college graduates. Okay, so these are our and um, numbers. So 54 men were male and college graduates. 62 people were females and college graduates. 31 people were males and not college graduates. And 40 people were female and not college graduates. All right. So the probability that someone is male and a college graduate, well, there's 54 people who meet that condition. To get the probability, though, you have to divide by the total number. So we're going to do 54 out of 187. And that's our probability. Okay, Male or college grad. Okay, so this time it's or. So we want all the college uh, grads. And we want the um, ones who are also males, but who aren't necessarily college graduates. So let's look. All right, there's two ways we can do this. You can do the 116. So that is um, all the males out of 187. Plus, all that was all the college graduates, 116 out of 187, that's all the college graduates. I think I said that wrong just a second ago. Plus all the males, 85 out of 187. Now, we've added in this 54 out of 187 twice. Once when we did the row total over 187, once when we did the column total over 187. So we have to subtract that off. So minus 54 out of 187, and that gives us our 147. Okay, and that's using the formula. The other thing that you can do, which I think is easier, is you just take the row total for, uh, or let's say, let's do the column total first, because it says male. So let's do 85. Okay, so we've taken care of all the males. The only other people that satisfy this are college graduates who aren't males. So you could just do 85 plus 62, which gives me about 147 over 187. So I did all the males, and then I added anybody else who is a college graduate, because that's what this means. It means male or college graduate, and then it does include the both part. Okay, male given college graduate. All right, so we're given that the people are college graduates, so we're not looking at the 187 people anymore. We're looking only at the 116 people who are college graduates. It's like we're ignoring all this down here. Okay, so the probability that if someone is male, given that they are a college graduate, is going to be 54 out of 116. Okay. All right, so what's the difference between and and given? The difference between uh, probability male and college grad and probability of male given college grad is the denominator. With conditional probability, we restrict our group. So we went from... If it was and, we'd consider everybody. Since it's given, we know we're not talking about the 71 people who did not graduate from college. When we're saying given college grad, it means we're restricting our fields to just the 116 people who graduated from college, and we want to know the probability that out of those 116 people that someone's male. So that's going to be the 54 out of 116. All right, that's it for lesson two. Go ahead and try the problems to try on your own. Thank you so much for um, taking good notes and listening to your video lesson again. Um, I will see you in class. I hope you have a great day.